G'day folks, today I'm putting some yabby nets in this little dam here and it's a dam that I've never been yabbying in before. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now the aim of the game today is to try and catch some bait yabbies. I've got a really good friend of mine, he's the same age as I am and he's battling cancer and he's not well and he's asked me if I could get him a few yabbies because he wants to go fishing and he doesn't just want to use worms for bait. So I'm going to put some nets in here and see if I can catch some yabbies. Now, these are the nets that I'm using. I've got two brand new collapsible bait traps. They're both baited up with good old dry dog food. New nets, new strings, new floats or bottles or whatever you want to call them. I'm set to go. Now you're not going to see me put the nets in because check this out. That's the camera that I usually film with and I've got no battery in it. <laughs> the batteries are in the car on the charger. Thankfully I've got another camera with me in my hand but I can't uh, mount it under my head. So anyway, I'll put the nets in now and I'll come back and see them later on. Worth noting, it's the 1st of September. The water's still very cold and it's still very, very early in the springtime. It might be still too cold to catch any yabbies, but you just never know. Let's put the nets in and find out. Now the first net that you didn't get to see me put in is just out there. I might put the other net in on the other side over there where it might be a little bit deeper maybe or in around those reeds. Righto, you can see the cord there. Net number two is also in. It's out there right in between those two tussocks or rushes or reeds or whatever you want to call them. So I've got one in this side and one over there in that bit of a grassy bank. They're both in about a foot of water or so. It's not very deep here. As I said, I've never been here before, but I'll give it a few hours and see how we go. And if there's none in them, well, I'll leave them in, then, leave them in all night and then check them again tomorrow. But we'll give it a few hours now and just see how they go. Right now, it's been about three hours. It's time to check these nets. I've bought me bucket, Justin, just in case I catch a few yabbies. Check this out. While I was gone, I've been out photographing and videoing some snakes. Have a look at this bit of footage. Snakes are such cool creatures and they're so misunderstood. But anyway, the moment of truth. Oh, whoa! I was not expecting that. They aren't bait yabbies, they are huge big eaters. Look at the size of the claws on that. There's only two, but look at how big they are. <laughs> they're gonna go, I kept a few from up near Urana just recently. And now I think I've caught five or six that are a bit larger than these, but these are still large. These are going to go with them. Not the bait yabbies I was after, but I've got some monsters. You beauty! What a great start. Oh, let another one go. Here it is. I was not expecting that. Awesome. Well, I couldn't have asked for a better start, especially considering it's the, only the first day of spring. Awesome! What are you, net number two? Yes, I can feel, yes, 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 there's, 
Look, there's four or five big ones in here. This spot rocks. This is the first time I've ever been to this spot. Look at what I'm catching. Huge big blue claw yabbies. One, two, three, four. None of them have got eggs. Beautiful clean yabbies. Five. So I've caught five really nice sized eatable clean yabbies. And I've got half a dozen from my uh, recent trip up into the Riverina as well. I couldn't be any more excited. What a start to spring. I love this. I love yabbying. Cray fishing season only ended yesterday. And the day after the cray season ended, I'm already out catching big yabbies. Oh, I've got some huge yabbies in there. I don't know whether you can see them or not. Awesome. I'll throw some grass in with them. Take them home and put them with a few that I kept on a recent yabbying trip. And then I'll come back and check these nets tomorrow. You beauty! I couldn't be happier. Awesome! Good morning everyone. I'm back. It's the morning after. Now I've got to put some water in my bucket before I check these nets. And while I'm doing that, I want to tell you that it's trout opening. This is probably the first trout opening that I've missed for 20 years or more. The combination of my back, I've got a bad back, and I've said that plenty of times over the years on my channel, but it's particularly sore at the moment. A combination of my sore back, I've got commitments with my daughter this afternoon, and I'm just super excited to check these yabby nets. A combination of those three things made me decide I want to sit out trout opening this year, and I'll go next year. That's, uh, there's a few in there, but it's not as many as I thought there would be. I think there's three monsters, three big ones, only two. I've got a little one, I've got a little bait one. <laughs> I'll throw him back because he'll just get killed in the bucket. This mission initially started off as a mission to collect some bait sized yabbies for a friend of mine who's not well, but I failed miserably when these little big kahunas turned up. I've got one bait sized one in the net here now, but I'm not going to put him in the bucket with all their monsters. There's no point putting that in the bucket with the monsters, it'll just get killed. I'll have to go on a special, a separate mission to get some bait yabbies. Anyway, I'll fold this net up, take the bait out, then go check the other net. Right, I got the last net. I'm not going to lie, that was a little bit disappointing, this catching two. But it doesn't matter, I've got, I've got seven here yesterday, two now, I've caught nine. And I've got half a dozen from my recent trip to Uranus, so I've got quite a few to cook up. Oh, there was one on top of the net then, when I moved that. This net's only got two as well, and they're not quite as big. Anyway, not nearly, I expected to come here, I honestly thought... I'll come here and I'll probably catch about 12 or 14 big yabbies in each net. <laughs> I actually caught more yesterday when the nets were only in just for a few hours. That'll do. Uh, there you'll do. Alright, anyway. So I'll do 7, 8, nine, I've got 11 from this dam, half a dozen or so from Urana. Let's go and cook them up. I've made my way to a nice quiet part of the forest to try and cook these yabbies. I'm sort of hoping that being in here it might be out of the wind. It is a little bit breezy today. Here's my setup. I've got my Coleman Hyper Flame two burner stove to cook them with. I reviewed this a few years ago. I reviewed this table too. Look how dirty it is. I haven't used it for a long time. Should have brought a tablecloth. It might have made it look a bit better. But anyway, I've already put some water in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add some vinegar. This is the simplest and most effective way to cook yabbies. This is, the, this is my favourite way. Sometimes simple is best. Just going to add a small amount of white vinegar, home brand white vinegar in this case. Just a little bit. <laughs> Seriously, don't be scared to throw heaps of vinegar in. Vinegar's great. Put a heap of salt in. I'm going to go way overboard with everything here, and that's okay. And normally I like to get a couple of lemons, cut them in half, and then squeeze the lemons in. Please squeeze the juice in and then throw the lemons in, but I haven't got any real lemon, so I've got the next best thing, some lemon juice. And I'll just squirt a heap of that in there. That reminds me of my first movement this morning when I got out of bed. Right, eh? Let's get this stove on. Turn the gas on. Turn the gas on. Oops, just a go up. I haven't used this stove for ages. I usually use my little Trangia or my little uh, 
MSR whisper light. It's the first time I've used this big one for a very long time, and it started. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's horrible. Oh, sit that. Right now, the whistling has died down. It lasted about 20 seconds. I forgot this stove does that. It must be this, this stuff. It does it with my uh, frying pans as well. Put a frying pan on it, whistles for about a minute or so, and then it quietens down. But anyway, while I'm waiting for my uh, water, salt, vinegar, and lemon combination to boil, I'm going to get my yabbies ready. Now there's my yabbies. There's some nice big yabbies in there. They're ready to go. These haven't been purged or left to soak in salt water or any of that stuff. I don't worry about any of that. I don't think it really makes a huge amount of difference. Now, as always, I've forgotten something. The only thing I've forgotten is a plate to put the yabbies on when they're cooked. So, I'm going to sit them on the lid of my esky because that's so much cleaner than my table. <laughs> I'll take them out of the water and I'll sit them on the esky. They're looking good. Gee, that smells nice. Even without the yabbies in it, it still smells nice. I'm just drying out my nets. It's always a good idea to open these types of nets up and dry them out a little bit. But I'm just checking them for holes. I was a bit surprised at the, uh, the fact that I only caught sort of four or five yabbies after being in all night. I wonder maybe if a few might have got out. Or maybe that it's not as active at night time because it was a frost last night. I don't know. Just can't see any holes. But anyway, if you're using these types of nets, it's always a good idea to, to just open them up and dry them out and air them out before you collapse them down for storage. Just prevents them from rotting and becoming brittle. We've got an SKP here. There you go. How's the water looking? Steaming, but not boiling. Right, it's just starting to boil now, but not enough. I want it to be a raging boil before I throw the yabbies in. Right, we're starting to get a, a full on boil here. That's better. That's ready to go. You want to be careful because once you put all this stuff in there, the, uh, the vinegar and the salt, it'll froth up, spill over and put your flame out if you're not careful. Righto. Those two are stuck together so they can go in first. Another one in. I'm using a bigger pot. Last time I'd done this, I only had a small pot. So I put them in one at a time and then brought it back up to a boil, but that's still boiling there now. Can go in. I'm hoping to get them all in, but I don't know whether I will be able to or not. Well, they're looking good. They've been in for a minute or two. They're all in there. I've, fit, I've managed to fit them all in. I'll normally wait until the tail breaks away from the, the shell, which is the carapace. That one there's broken away. That's normally an indication that they're cooked. Normally only takes three or four minutes. I'll just give them a couple of minutes longer and then I'll take them out. But they're looking good. And I've got to tell you, they're smelling every bit as good. Looking good and smelling better. They are looking good and I reckon that they're about done. So I'm going to turn the water off and then take the yabbies out. Turn the gas off I should say, not turn the water off. Right, I'll take these out now and sit them on the lid of my esky, seeing as though I forgot to bring a plate. How good do they look? What an awesome feed of yabbies. An awesome feed of Charax Destructors. If you're cooking them at home, when you take them out of the water, it's always good to put them in an ice slurry or even just run them under the cold tap because they're so hot now, they're actually cooking themselves. <laughs> they keep cooking after you take them out because there's so much heat in them. I've got a friend who's a, uh, a master chef and he told me that. So where possible, it's good to put them on an ice slurry or just even just run them under some cold water. But I'm out here in the bush and I don't have any ice slurries or running taps. So uh, I'm just going to let them cool down in the shade while I pack everything up and then I'm going to shell them. Now they're all cooked. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to shell one and show you how I shell them. And then I'm going to shell the rest. I'm going to put all the meat in this plastic bag, take it home, give it a wash and enjoy them at home. But I'll, I'll do one now just to show you what I'll do. I'll break the claws off first. Just, they just, you grab them, you just break them off. Grab the tail. I put my thumb up under the bottom like that and grab that with my wrist, twist and pull. Now there's an ant nest just over there. 
and I reckon that those ants are going to love these scraps and that's one of the benefits of cooking these out in the bush. So there's my tail, you can see it needs a bit of a wash, there's a bit of, I call it mustard and stuff in there. Now I get my thumb, I go up under the side here and I just break off a little bit and I pull that around and then that comes off and you'll see there part of the meat's exposed. That's probably enough that I can pull it out but just in case I'll break off a little bit more. So I've broken and, and the bit underneath. So now all that's left on there is the tail. So I'll pull the tail off. Now there's the, you can eat it like that, but it has still got the pipe inside it or the poo line as we call it. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to pull at the top and pull the top bit off. That's the roof over the, the pipe or the chute, whatever you want to call it. I'll pull that out and throw it over there. That's ready to go. That's how I'm going to be putting them in the bag to take them home. Now I've got a bit of water here. I'll just give that a bit of a wash. I'll stand back a bit. It's always good to give it a bit of a wash under fresh water just to remove that bits of guts and stuff. It won't make you sick, but it does taint the flavour. Right now, I'm ready to go. I've already put my salt away. That's okay, I'm only eating one. And that's the cap over the top there. And that is unbelievable. Bite that in half, it's so big. I have forgotten how good Yabby's taste. That was amazing. Now I'm going to shell all these, put the meat in there, take it home and wash them and enjoy them. Folks, what an awesome morning I've had. It is trout opening. I don't think I've ever done a Yabby catch and cook on trout opening before. Ha! This has been a wonderful adventure. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hopefully you'll join me on my next adventure.